I don't think video games should try to be other things. So when people said to me that Divinity Original Sin 2 is like D&D, kind of bristle. There are things that tabletop RPGs do that video games can't and vice versa. But after playing it, I do love it. And I think I understand the comparison. There are of course surface similarities in theme and mechanics, but really Divinity evokes the feeling of D&D by making you an active collaborator in the experience. You'll mostly be doing a lot of D&D type stuff, talking to weird people and animals, discovering stuff in the open world and engaging in turn-based strategic scrapping. Now, ordinarily, I'd outline the basic plot, but just like in a game of D&D, the larger plot is just not that important. The smaller moments, mysteries and general tone is what really matters here. For example, there is an awful lot of nasty stuff going on. Rivalon. Slavery, war, genocide, all sorts. But it never feels like convenient set dressing. Instead, the game meaningfully considers those themes, making them tangible rather than philosophical by funneling them through specific characters, often characters in your party, forcing you to reckon with those themes yourself. This is why I recommend using the pre-built characters. They already feel like they're woven into the world, which immediately enhances the fact that the decisions you make in action and dialogue do have a significant impact on the plot and those characters. Seeing those choices ripple out in future moments for good and bad is gratifying, but even more impressive, often the initial questions you started with are good standalone moral quandaries, worthy of thought regardless of their mechanical function. The little boy beside her looks at you. He picks his nose. Fortunately, as well, it never really gets bogged down in the potential graveness of it all. Larian has mastered a sort of silly but serious tone that can bounce between tragedy and comedy without feeling incoherent. Now, I've started with the serious stuff here because I think it's particularly impressive, but most of the time, Divinity is just kind of goofy. Like, just behind the computer screen, there's an impossibly quick-witted dungeon master with a playful and self-satisfied grin plastered across their face. For instance, there is this side quest that revolves entirely around two chickens called Peeper and Big Marge. It may be one of my all-time favorite video game quests purely for the charming ridiculousness of it all. Tell that to Big Marge if you dare. And it isn't alone. Divinity is packed with funny dialogue, notes, descriptions, names, and entire fantasy sitcom scenario. It is the reason exploration is so fun here. The things you discover are not just your average fantasy drivel. There's always a sprinkling of charm on top. They're absurd, surprising, and genuinely intriguing. Whether that be negotiating a bridge crossing between two random trolls, discovering a cave filled with deadly puzzles, this is not quite the safest place I've ever been. Or pursuing the steps towards the main quest, but it is absolutely at its best when it gives you an open space and a bunch of Lego blocks that could lock together in a ton of different ways to fill that space it just kind of lets you play. The Lego blocks in this case are the character abilities. I won't go too deeply into this specifically, but suffice to say, every party has enough tools in their bag of tricks to make most problems a choice. You can choose to sneak, lockpick, talk, or smash your way through most of the game's problems, depending on how you spec or what suits the situation best. But the route you decide to go down does matter. Deciding to kill everyone in a pub just to get at one dude will probably hurt you in the long run. And I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. A nice balance of freedom and consequences. Don't get me wrong though, massacring all the patrons of the pub would be fun. Combat is probably where the freedom shines the brightest. Even the most basic of character that just sort of slaps things with a big sword has a ton of abilities and situational choices. There's like a multi-leveled pyramid of strategic considerations. The first layer of this is positioning. Certain characters are better closer or further away from the enemies, and environment and elevation force you to manage this on a pretty constant basis. The next layer is enemy priority. You can't focus one enemy at a time in this game because physical damage only damages physical armor and magic damage only damages magic armor. 
and your party should probably do both. The next layer is standalone ability effects like knocking an enemy down or turning them into a chicken. The final layer is interactive abilities that affect one another like poison clouds exploding onto contact with fire or water amplifying electric damage. And there's a bunch of layers I've had to skip in there. All of this results in a brilliant combat system that is very tactical and challenging, but is also really responsive to your creativity. Divinity Original Sin 2 is a good game in its own right, but I played it with my partner over like an 18 month period during a really shit time in the world, when I couldn't muster the energy to DM a campaign. The ridiculous laughs, squabbling challenges and captivating world of escape the game provided was almost as good as getting around a table with my friends and at the end of the day it was really just what we needed at that time and that is why it's so good. Hello thank you for watching my um, very silly video but uh, I had a question for you all. I've been working my way through the Dishonored games and I'm thinking about making one big video on the entire series instead of individual videos reviewing each one. I just want to know if any of you had any thoughts. So let me know. Oh well.